안녕하십니까? 온라인 서절의 김경원입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Kim Gyeon of Online Surgery. Let's look at the case along with the surgical video. Let's take an overview of the case. This is panoramic image at the initial visit. This is a 65-year-old male patient in the upper right quadrant and lower left quadrant. The teeth were missing. The chief complaint of the patient was missing teeth on both sides. The patient wanted implant treatment. Number 15, 16, 17, number 36 and 37 are missing. The patient wanted to receive surgery from the upper right first. And he wanted to proceed with a surgery on lower left after that. There's no special history in terms of PMH or PDH. For the upper right sinus graft, along with a lateral approach, it should be done. Last kit will be used for the surgery. As for the bone graft, in this case, I decided to use layered bone graft. So I would use a Shuros, the allogenic bone on the bottom, and use Aos, the bovine bone xenograft. At the same time, I decided to place the three implants at once. This is CT image before surgery at initial visit. The sinus, the patency of the osteum is well maintained. The sinus looks nice. The problem is number 15. The alveolar bone height is about 10 millimeter. It's not a problem on the buccal side. There's exostosis, meaning that there's a bone sticking out here. This will be a problem in the prostodontic phase, so during surgery, using chisel, this will be removed. Next, number 16, lateral approach needs to be done here. The residual bone height is about 2 to 3 millimeter, but as you can see within the lateral wall, there is clearly a blood vessel. Intraosseous anastomosis can be observed in other words, posterior superior alveolar artery and inferior orbital artery is in anastomosis. This is very clear here and I thought there could be hemorrhage during surgery. Next is number 17 as shown. You can see the vessel here too. Sinus graft will be performed. After that, three implants would be placed. That was the treatment plan. This is immediate post-op image. You can see the bone graft and that three implants have been placed nicely. The bone graft is positioned more towards posterior side than expected. Because I used the last kit, the window was smaller and the bone graft was positioned because of this. This is immediate post-op image on CT number 15. As I mentioned before, surgery on the buccal side. The exostosis area was removed using chisel. If it were not uh, removed, then it could have been a problem when doing prosthesis. That's why it was removed. The position looks okay. The window seems to have been made a little bit lower than expected. The position looks okay. There is no problem related to bleeding. Number 17, the bone graft was positioned more posteriorly than expected, but because I used last kit and because the window was small, that resulted. This is at initial visit, right after surgery and three months after surgery. Second surgery was performed. This is panoramic image post-op six months. At the time, ISQ value was not measured. When I measured ISQ post-op seven months, so this is a CT image. In the case of number 15, ISQ is a 74, 75, number 16, 65, 66. So the graft is stabilizing and within sinus, there's a bit of mucosal thickening. In the case of number 17, the ISQ values were 78 and 80. The ISQ values were quite favorable. 
the graph material that were positioned posteriorly was resorbed. After that, vital prosthesis was delivered, and this is the panoramic image. ER type prosthesis was delivered, and this is the panoramic image. Up until now, no major problems arose, and long term follow up is necessary. Let's look at the surgical clip. Incision was made. In the case of a posterior area, I use the blade otherwise like this. From the distal side, I am making vertical incision. I am making vertical incision from top to down, but if it is difficult to do so, it's fine if you do it the other way around. There is exostosis here. The flap can be thin here. We need to detach the flap so that it does not tear. Flap is reflected as mentioned in number 15. There's exostasis. I'm going to use the chisel to remove it. If it sticks out like this in the later prosthodontic phase, there can be problems like cleansing. Therefore, as we do surgery, I'm going to remove it. And using this, graft will be done. Chisel is used to remove the bony tissue because there are still sharp areas. Bone file is used to make it smooth. This needs to be removed for smooth prosthodontic phase and for self-cleansing. Diameter 7.0 Core drill plus one millimeter stopper is used to form lateral window. If you look at the CT that I've shown you I, earlier, on the lateral wall, there's intraosseous anastomosis. Vessel was observed. In my case, I'm trying to form the lid slightly more mesial. Perhaps I could avoid the vessel. When you do drilling and when bleeding occurs, you should not try to stop bleeding at that point, but you need to form the window first and then stop the bleeding. You need to form the window first. The lateral wall is slightly thick and because of the curvature, it looks more thick than expected. Two millimeter stopper is connected. Looking at the tendency of how the window is being formed, I don't think I'll invade upon the blood vessel area. If you're in contact with the vessel, there can be a bit of bleeding. Don't get flabbergasted by this. After forming window, you need to stop bleeding as shown on CT. If the vessel is fully within the bone at times, you need to use needle holder to apply compression. Stopping bleeding for intraosseous vessels can be done more easily. Three millimeter stopper is being used. When looking at the pattern, I do not believe that I have touched upon the vessel. I don't think this is going to be a problem. Lateral window has been formed. It's coming off. The lateral wall is comparatively very thick. Bone lid is being removed. You can see that sinus membrane is moving. Elevation is going to be done. Free elevator is going to be used. Don't try to lift it. Follow the bone and it will be lifted naturally. As you can see, the membrane is moving well, and this has been lifted without membrane perforation. Lance drill is going to be used to get the position in number 15. As for number 15, even without engaging the sinus, I think it would be able to place the implant. 2.2 twisted drill is used. Parallel pin is used to check the relation with the antagonist. The implant direction should be towards the functional cusp or in between buccal cusp and central groove. 
Landstrel is used once again to get the position. This is now related to sinus, and you can get the sense that the sinus floor is being penetrated. Two-pointed two-twister drill is used to penetrate the sinus floor. Parallel pin is placed to check the position. I'm checking the relation with the antagonist. You can see that it is in between the buccal cusp and central groove. Sinus floor has been penetrated. Two point to two twisted drill is used. In this case, you just need to penetrate it. So if you do not uh, drill too much, the sinus membrane will not be penetrated. The relation with antagonist looks uh, favorable. From the mesial side, I'm going to use 3.5 by 10 millimeter wanted to taper drill. Number 16. Number 17. Drilling is done. 4.5 by 10 millimeter wanted to taper drill is used in number 15, 16, and 17. After that, Allogenic bone, sure os, is used, and aos, a xenograft, is unpacked as well. Previously, we have harvested autogenous bone from the buccal side, the exostosis. I did not particulate the bone too much, sure os is used. I used to just one last drill, so the hole is a bit smaller. If you find it very difficult, you can extend the hole size. In my case, I didn't find it too difficult, so I just used once. Having more host bone is more favorable to bone regeneration. In number 17, I checked whether bone graft was done properly. I've checked this using depth gauge. TS3BA surface 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant was placed in number 15. 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant. This is BA surface and hydrophilic, so it was irrigated with saline water. Stability looks favorable. Hand wrench is used to adjust the final depths. About one millimeter under, the position looks okay. Next, in number 16, BA surface, I'm hydrating the implant. It is 5.0 by 10 millimeter. The final drill was 4.5. I did not drill full length. The preparation was done like this. The alveolar bone was only 2 to 3 millimeter. Therefore, 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed like this. Under preparation was done. Primary stability looks favorable. It's over 20 Newton centimeters. Next, in number 17, 5.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant was placed. Primary stability looks good. Torque wrench was used to adjust the final depths. Primary stability was about 20 newton centimeter. I'm checking the relation with the antagonist. It looks good. It's between functional cusp and central groove. Primary stability was okay. Mosquito U was used. Implant driver was used to place the implant slightly deeper. Because the amount of alveolar bone was insufficient, I was not able to place it sufficiently deeply. I'm placing cover screw here. Graft material 
is being added on the top now I'm repositioning the lateral window and then suturing was done In my case, especially in number 15, I use mesial tooth to do anchor suture. By doing this, you can reposition flap without tearing. The first suture is most important. Once that this is successful, figure of eight suture is used to suture the site simply. This was the surgical clip. Last kit was used to form window. Within the last kit, if you use 7 millimeter diameter, the lateral window becomes a smaller and it can be difficult to manipulate it. If possible, in order to regenerate the bone with bone graft, if there's more host bone, it will be more favorable. Therefore, I try to make the window smaller and do bone graft. Because of this, the bone graft material became more posterior. If you find the window too small, you can use the drill once again to extend the whole size in number 15. The bone that was sticking out was removed. This was then particulated and added to the allogenic bone and used as a bone graft. After that, I used AOS, the xenograft, the bovine bone, for space maintenance. Sinus graft was performed and three implants were placed at the same time. Thank you for watching.